Welcome to this overview of trade secret law. I'm Professor Seth C. Ornberg from the University of New Hampshire Franklin Pierce School of Law. And over the course of five videos, we are going to cover the basics of trade secret law. Our five videos will include introduction to trade secret law, explaining why it exists and how to understand it generally. We're going to define what is a trade secret under American law. We're going to understand when a trade secret is misappropriated under trade secret law in America. We're going to evaluate how to protect trade secrets with contractual arrangements. And we're going to discuss what remedies are available for parties whose trade secrets have been misappropriated. So stay tuned for this five video series. And at the end of it, you should have a basic fundamental understanding of how trade secret law works. Protecting trade secrets with contracts. Trade secrets are information with independent economic value that is not generally known or readily ascertainable and which the trade secret holder makes reasonable efforts to maintain the secrecy of. The misappropriation of a trade secret is illegal and is actionable at civil or criminal law if there is a wrongful acquisition, a wrongful use, or a wrongful disclosure. Some, but not all, courts will enforce trade secret rights before an actual misappropriation occurs because once a secret is leaked, its value is destroyed. So some courts will enjoin or stop a party who is about or threatening to reveal a trade secret. But not all courts will give remedies for threatened and not actual misappropriation. Whether or not courts follow this inevitable disclosure doctrine, whether they will prevent former employees from not competing with former employers, even when they have not signed a non-compete agreement, a lot of nots in there, is related to whether that jurisdiction disfavors non-competition agreements and other restraints on trade that would protect trade secrets. There are a variety, though, of contractual ways parties can privately agree to protect trade secrets. In fact, it may be important to do this in order to have a trade secret because these contractual protections are part of reasonable efforts to maintain secrecy. The main protections are called non-competition agreements, non-solicitation agreements, non-disclosure agreements, and confidentiality agreements. Doctrinally, however, what matters is not what these agreements are called, but what they do. The sort of agreements really do two basic things. They can prevent someone from working in a certain time, place, or manner. And they can prevent someone from saying something about a particular thing. Moreover, these agreements do not necessarily come on a typewritten piece of paper with the title non-competition agreement written on top. Such agreements or clauses pertaining to these type of agreements can be found buried in employment agreements, human resource manuals, and in contracts with titles that do not reflect the intent or meaning of the clauses. In general, from a policy perspective, agreements that prevent working are more problematic than agreements then that prevent speaking about trade secrets. The right to work one's trade and to earn a living is considered fundamental in American values, and restraints on trade can be antitrust violations. Now, the right to free speech is obviously an important fundamental freedom, but courts have long recognized that this right can be constrained in various instances, especially when here by private agreement. The landscape regarding enforceability of contractual protections from trade secrets is rapidly changing. California has not enforced non-competition agreements, except in connection with the sale of businesses, for a long time. And other states are now following California's lead. The Federal Trade Commission is likewise exploring a nationwide ban on non-competition agreements. While it's impossible now to predict the future of how all this will go, here are some tentative guidelines around protecting trade secrets through contracts. Non-competition agreements are only enforceable when they are reasonably limited in time and scope. In some jurisdictions, this is generally regarded as within 100 miles and less than two years, but by no means is that an absolute rule. In other jurisdictions, non-competes are never enforceable and almost everywhere the standards are changing fast. Non-disclosure agreements are generally enforceable when the non-disclosure agreement is reasonably necessary for the protection of the employer's legitimate interest in a trade secret. It can't be unduly harsh 
and curtailing the employee's legitimate efforts to earn a livelihood. The NDA has to be reasonable from the standpoint of public policy and, like every contract, NDAs, and for that matter, all contracts protecting trade secrets, must be supported by valuable consideration.